all in Vegas where I go to every poker room in Las Vegas and I play a session and vlog it. Today we are, well tonight actually, we are at the Excalibur Hotel and Casino. Now I just recently played here for the first time. They spread a 1-2 game. They have a few, few tables right next to the uh, Thunder from Down Under uh, place. This is famous for its Tournament of Kings and uh, the little medieval theme they got going on. They also have a small midway, sort of like Circus Circus, where you get to play carnival games and a little arcade. And uh, yeah, it's a very small poker room. They have daily tournaments. They spread one, two, and also two, six spread limit. So today we're gonna try and run up our bankroll back up to two grand. And uh, bought two, brought, I brought two buy-ins with me. This casino's in M Life post the comps here just like I always do and uh, yeah let's go inside let's check it out so it is currently the last weekend of April and I don't usually do these vlogs on Saturdays but I just posted my Binion's corporate challenge on my YouTube and uh, hopefully we're gonna be able to take this session and push it over, push our bankroll back over to what we started with the end of next month is the World Series of Poker so for the next couple of weeks I'm going to be not playing a lot of live poker, so this actually might be my last All In Vegas episode for uh, for quite some time, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop vlogging. I will be vlogging some of the tournaments that I'm playing next month. I like to try and have May be uh, like a small sabbatical from poker. Um, I do take a little bit of time to study. I also like to play a lot of online poker, a lot of the online satellites that they run on WSOP.com on Sundays. So I'm going to be doing that for the next couple of weeks. I'm also taking a vacation. It's EDC weekend, one of the weekends in May, and I'll be attending. So there is a lot of things that I will be doing in May. And uh, so my focus from poker is going to be shared with my focus on getting my mind and body right uh, for the World Series of Poker. This will just be a pause for the All in Vegas series, but I will continue posting, on vi uh, posting my videos on YouTube. So definitely convenient. Uh, if you park in the back garage behind the Excalibur, as soon as you walk in, you'll see the sports book on the right hand side. And then right there, uh, wait, where is it? Like sort of right in this area, that's where the poker room is. So if you park back there, not too far of a walk. I've never actually parked back there before. I've always parked at the Luxor and walked over. But um, yeah, the poker room is just right nearby. Uh, I'm gonna jump on a list. There's only two one-two games going. Hopefully I can get on um, get on one of the tables really quick. Uh, heads up, you do have to pay for parking here for the garage. And if there's a long wait, maybe I'll walk around and check it out. Maybe I can show you guys the midway. Um, but it might be closed now. It's about 11 o'clock at night and I don't usually play this late, but. A lot of restaurants down here at the Excalibur. Uh, one of the known ones being Dick's, uh, where they're supposed to be rude to the customers and basically be a dick. Uh, your server, your host, they're all douchebags or dicks. Never eaten there. It doesn't appeal to me, but what do you guys think? You guys want to eat at a place where they're supposed to be mean and rude and fucking weird and shit? I don't know. That's just weird. Usually when I want to eat and stuff like that, I just want to fucking sit down, eat, and then leave. guys mid-session update playing the game for about an hour uh, relatively good table um, and there's a couple of hands I want to talk about so let's get straight into it in this particular hand I'm in middle position I have about hundred and eighty five dollars and it folds around to me and I look down at Queen Jack of Spades I bump it up to seven dollars it looks like the average pre-flop raise um, on this table is like seven eight nine dollars so I bump it up to seven dollars 
folds around to the small blind who makes the call and the big blind who calls as well. The, the flop comes jack nine eight with one spade, checks it over to me and I go ahead and make a continuation bet of $15. The small blind folds, the small blind folds and the big blind shoves for $44 total. I cannot fold for that price. I call. The turn brings the ace of spades and the river is the seven of hearts. I flip over queen jack and he actually has king jack. So didn't win that but it's okay, it was a short stack. Uh, I reload another hundred bucks and uh, this hand happened shortly thereafter. Chip stack right now is about 205 and then this hand happened. We are on the button. There is one middle position call. Folds around to me and I look down at ace king offsuit. I raise it up to $12, folds around to middle position, who calls. The flop comes ace, deuce, three with two spades. And middle position player decides to donk bet out for $15. Uh, I'm just gonna call. Uh, I could have raised, but I wasn't really too sure. I haven't seen him donk bet uh, any type of hands yet. Uh, but he did look like a recreational player. So I went ahead and made the call. The turn brings the four of hearts. It's not the best card that I wanted to see, but I really don't see a lot of fives in his limp calling range. I, I really think he has an ace here. Uh, he decides to bet out again for 15 bucks. Went for the cautionary side of things, and I elected to just call and see what the river brings. So I just call the 15 bucks, and the river brings the 10 of hearts. So the backdoor flush draw gets there. And he takes a little bit of a long time before he announces check. And I decide to go for super thin value and bet out $15. And he checks his cards and he's like, I can't beat a flush and he ends up folding. So I'm happy to take it down. And boom, all done. Uh, just wrapping it up. Played about for three hours. I was in for $300 and I cashed out 376. Uh, I'm walking to an area where I can do some hand histories. So let's talk about some hands. Um, a lot of the dealers were pretty good. There's a few, few little slow ones, but um, if you can get past that, uh, some of the other dealers are super good. All right, so in this hand, um, still 10-handed. I'm under the gun plus one. There's a limp in under the gun, and I look down at pocket fives. I decided to raise it up to $10, and it folds around to the cutoff who makes the call, the button makes the call, the small blind makes the call, the big blind makes the call, and the under the gun player makes the call. So there's six of us going to this flop. So the pot's getting pretty big, uh, even though that my raise sizing was just $10. There's already $60 to a flop, and then the flop comes five, eight, six. Nice flop for me to flop a set. Lots of draws out there. It's even better when the small blind, she leads out for $20. Now she started the hand with about $90. She's really committing so much of her stack to bet out, to don't bet this, this flop. What's even better is the big blind just cold calls and he also has a similar stack depth with about $100 I think he started with. I go ahead and elect to put maximum pressure on them. I raise it up to $100 to effectively put them all in. Folds around to the small blind who tanks a little bit and she ultimately folds. I think she was looking at the big blind and considering that he still has to act and what is he cold calling with so she ends up folding. The big blind, he actually tanks for a little bit and then stacks of his chips to the line and he makes the call. Uh, the turn brings the deuce of diamonds and as the turn's being flipped over, he flips over ace eight offsuit and I thought he was on a draw, possibly like a flush draw or something. So I decided to table my five five before the river was dealt and the river was the nine of hearts. So super nice to rake in that pot and essentially flop a set at a live game. It's been a long time since I've flopped sets only because you know, in live poker, you don't really see a lot of hands, but definitely super happy about that one. So the Excalibur was really cool. One of the interesting things that happened during the table, two players got into a hand, 
and on the turn, one player bet out $30. The other player that was in the hand cut out some chips to call, and he did a forward motion past the line and pulled it back. And then started tanking a little bit and then ultimately stacked all his chips together and put it over the line and went all in for about $100. Uh, the other player was deep into the tank and I didn't say anything at the time because uh, I realized it too late I didn't really know what was going on And he ended up folding as soon as he folded and the other player raked in the chips He got up went to the restroom and I asked the other player I was like did you see him angle shoot you and the dealer said yeah I saw it too, but just so you know here at the Excalibur forward motion doesn't count and I was like even if it passes the line he was like if you did forward motion the chips would have had to touch the felt, but you can pull it back. And I was like, really? That's interesting. He was like, yeah, you can literally take a stack of chips, put it over the line, pull it back, and then cut out your bed if you wanted to. So that's something that's uh, good to know about if you're gonna come here and play at the Excalibur. The house rules are a little bit different than other poker rooms. But nonetheless, the dealers were pretty informative and they were super nice, super awesome. And um, I would play here again because the players here, because the buy-in are so low, they love buying in for short stacks. So it's really easy to put pressure on these small stacks. But yeah, I'm really happy. I grinded out a win, $75 win. That puts us over the starting bankroll for the for the, for the all-in Vegas vlog. Um, in May, I'll probably do one more video. I'm still debating if I am going to have time or not. But nonetheless, if you don't, you guys will see me at the World Series of Poker. I'm going to be filming when I'm over there. And hopefully we can make some deep runs. But yeah, as always, guys, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button below. Comment. Hit the thumbs up. Um, DM me on Instagram. All that shit that I always talk about at the end of the videos. And I will see you guys next month either for another All In Vegas episode or for the World Series of Poker. Peace. Is that the best position for you, Kitty? You tired?